and welcome back to Talking Ball, brought to you by HP Polly. I'm Nicola Hume, and we're going to talk about all things Oracle Red Bull Racing. Now, today, I have two very special guests with me. Our first guest famously is not a fan of podcasts. It's Max Verstappen. Yes. Oh, and three-time world champion, casually, you know. And his race engineer is Jean-Pierre Lambiesi. Hello, yes. that's correct. <laughs> what? Well, you forgot to mention big fan of podcasts. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything you'd like to say before we carry on about that little cheeky podcast comment? That you no, made? let's just get on with it, I think. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Three-time world champion. How does that feel hearing those words? Pretty awesome, right? Well, it's something that I never imagined uh, to hear when I started racing. So, uh, yeah, for sure, of course, it's something that um, I'm very proud of. Um, but now that you are here, I hope, of course, it doesn't stop here. That's the next thing. Yeah. So then, it, well, hopefully fourth, fifth, and you just keep going and going and going. Yeah. Until yeah. we get too old. Well, and yeah, too fat. <laughs> or too fat. Yeah, that's the problem. Pro the that's point. probably the problem. Yeah, <laughs> at the end. <laughs> so do you have um, a replica of your trophies? So like your, your world championship trophies that you've got from 2021 and 22, where do you keep them? At home? Um, it's like... Um, rotating trophy so i have like the replica and the real one at home um so yeah, the replica of course will stay with me and i can uh, engrave it every every single year but uh, the real one of course you keep it as long you are world champion um but yeah it's a uh, it's nice trophies to have at home do, do, so whereabouts at home do you keep it because like kate winslet for example she's won an oscar she keeps it in her downstairs toilet so that when people come round they can pretend that they've won an oscar so maybe it's an idea pop it in your downstairs i hope they wash their hands though before they touch it oh yeah that's true <laughs> yeah health and safety maybe don't do that no i have i have one next to my sim ring and the other one um in my uh, well in the living room basically in the closet it's been a bit of a a crazy season for you. I mean, it seems like you've been so comfortable just sat there at the front of basically every race. How has that felt for you? Yeah, I've, I mean, um, of course, at the end of the day, it's a whole, you know, team effort. And um, I think this year the car has been incredible to drive. It's been, you know, fairly dominant, I would say. Fairly. And uh, yeah, I uh, tried to extract uh, the most out of it. Do you get a little bit bored just kind of sitting there out the front by yourself? No, I would get thumbs. bored not winning. This is <laughs> this is uh, much better. This motivates me every single day, you know, to come back here at the factory, uh, you know, to prepare for the next races. But also once you're there, it's the best feeling out there. So for me, it's it's not boring at all. And what about for you, GP? How, how do you deal with, well, with I, Max just sat at the front? I, I was about to say my biggest fear is the moment that we do have increased competition and we're not winning every race because you see how he's treating me at the moment and he's winning every race, so that'd be <laughs> so, Oh dear. I'm, I'm really not looking forward to it again. We've, we've had that already. It's going to be We've a had the races where, you know, we might win one or two a year or not. And um, yeah, yeah I, think I, mean, it's, I think it's going to be fine. How long have you two been working together? This is eight seasons now, yeah. Coming at, yeah, the end of this season will be eight. I thought you was going to say too long. Because <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you, like you have such a nice relationship and you kind of seem to know each other inside out. Are you sort of friends outside of racing as well? Or is it just strictly a work thing for you both? There are so many races and there's so much time that you are forced to be together mm. that I think it would be unfair to expect Max to want to spend even more time with me or, or vice versa when he's finally got a weekend off. The thing is also that, you know, I come to the UK to dissimulate the stuff and then I'm really happy to leave the UK to go back home. Mm -hmm. And um, like GP says, you know, we're doing so many races together that, you know, it's also nice to just when you, you have free time to spend it with, you know, your close ones, your family and friends, because they, I think they deserve all the attention as well. But we did meet up during the holiday. We, uh, we spend the day together. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to do it, you know, here and there. But I think we see each other more than we see... Well, for you, your wife, for me, my girlfriend, so. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's, essentially, it's just like a second relationship for both of you, isn't it? Just with each other. It's very intense. Which is really nice, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's an easier relationship, that's true. <laughs> but you've kind of, you've grown to, to, to know each other really well because you seem to be able to cope with Max when he's not having a great day, but then also cope with Max when he's having a fabulous day and maybe getting a little bit too confident. So how do you keep control of the situation? 
Well, I think it's only natural that after, <laughs> you know, seven, eight years that, like you said before, we, we, know inside a, we, we know each other inside out and we know what triggers the other one or, or, or how to perhaps coax or put the arm around the other one's shoulder. So I think we know how to manage ourselves out of a, a difficult situation and also enjoy the, the better situations. But I think perhaps until three years ago, I think perhaps 18, 19, 20, when the car wasn't quite as as competitive as we, the team, would have liked, but I think especially Max, because at that point his, you could see his frustration coming through already that he wasn't able to compete for the championships at that point. Um, and we had a, a few ups and downs, I would say, in those in that period, the middle, third, fourth, fifth year. A few arguments. Um, but I think since 2021 20, was so intense, uh, I think we really, the relationship and the, and the bond was, yeah, cemented that year. Yeah. Uh, and then last year and, and this year has just been a, continu- a continuation of that. Um, and uh, yeah, he's my little brother. I would oh, that's treat nice. him as. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it, it is. You spend so much time together. And also, you know, I, I started at the team as 18 years old. I'm 26 now. So also I think as a person, I've grown a lot. Mm-hmm. So when I look back at, you know, those kind of images from, the first few races I did with the team, I'm like, oh my God, like, <laughs> it's very different, I think. Um, also in my behavior, I think it's only natural that also, you know, the connection and just me also growing up more, I think uh, that helps a lot in your relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you seem to have found a really nice balance. You seem in such a comfortable, happy place. I mean, how does this continue? You just keep attacking at race to race? Yeah, it does. But I mean, I, I still get upset um, even in such a dominant season when things don't go well and it's the same for GP like we still want to win we still want to do everything as perfect as we can even though I mean no one is perfect but we try to be as close to perfection as as possible and that's why sometimes of course we still have our arguments but it's all because we we are very driven to win and we we don't like when we come out of a weekend we say how we could have done things better or quite a bit better you know it still upsets us which I think is good because if you don't have that drive then I think something is wrong yeah, it makes the perfect relationship, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I think in a recent piece of content last week, actually in Qatar, they, they were asking me for one word to describe Max, and uh, I think my word was insatiable, which I think goes for me as well in that no matter how many races we win or how many championships we have won or could win, um, I think the point is I don't think we're ever happy and we what our bar is so high i'd say we're both perfectionists in that respect that nothing is is ever good enough and i think that's what really motivates us to just keep doing what we're doing following the process and uh, yeah achieving the best that we can so i mean you've already won this year's world championship so now i guess you just you can approach the next few races with a bit more of a relaxed manner or are you just gonna keep going in hard because you can no, I know myself that if I would ha- act like that, I'd just get annoyed with myself mm. uh, at the end of the day because I know that I'm going into a weekend not fully committed. And for me, that is unacceptable. Yeah. Um, of course, in a way, you know, you have one you can maybe try to enjoy it a bit. But once I know that I'm at the track, I, I you know, after FP1, FP2, I want to try and find my best balance. I want to try and get the best out of myself. You know, I, we, we discussed a lot of things. So if I start being a bit like, oh, whatever, like do what you like with the car, or like I'm not really interested in making an effort, I know that I will get upset. So at the end of the day, my approach will always be the same, you know, up until the point where you question yourself, like, am I still fully committed or not? But for the moment, that's definitely not uh, an issue. Because, I mean, racing is life for you. It seems like whatever kind of race it's going to be, you're still going to enjoy it. So even if you weren't in F1, you'd still be racing something else. So do you race like in day-to-day life? Like who's the first to finish brushing their teeth kind of thing? Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Not with those kind of things, no. Um, but of course, when we play like kind of games or whatever or other sports, of course, that kind of like winning mentality comes out. Only the problem is with most of the sports, I lack a sev- well, I have a severe lack of talent. So <laughs> uh, that, uh, yeah, I'm lucky that everything went into racing because uh, yeah, other, any other sport that I try to do, I'm, I'm just not very good at it. You know, I will never be, let's say, as good at it as I'm in racing. So yeah, but still that competitive spirit is always, always there. 
I mean, in terms of other sports, though, you both play paddle. Is that right? Yeah. So who's who's the best at paddle between the two? No, I think it's it's a team sport because ah, you play together. Right. So I think actually when we played together, we have been dominating the rest of the engineering department so far. Yeah, but it wasn't what I asked. If you were to play each other, who would who would that, be better? It doesn't it doesn't work like that? <laughs> <laughs> GP, I'm going to put that question to you. If you were to play each other, <laughs> I would say. I've got it depends how long more, the game is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a fair point, actually, because I think we played last week in Qatar, didn't we? As soon for as you stopped half, running, that's it. Yeah, uh, probably the first half an hour. I was making a lot of mistakes and I was getting very frustrated. And then your fitness levels won over. And, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, because it's movement and anticip- anticipation as well with, with the game. And at one point, when you get tired, you just stop running. Uh, you just try to just place the balls a bit more. But then things go wrong. So if it's like a one and a half hour intense heat game, I think I'll win. Because but, of the fitness. Side yes. But if it's UK weather, then I might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> You're what asking who, who's got the most talent on you, basically. Well, well, no, well not really. Not me, I'm I just think. asking who's, <laughs> <laughs> who's the most competitive, really, because you both obviously oh. have it in you. I get very upset if yeah. I'm, well, but just with myself, like when I realize how bad I am, I just can't, I can't deal with it. It's yeah. just shocking sometimes how I hit the ball. So I need a bit more um, finesse. A bit more practice. I'm practicing I'm quite practice, a bit. Yeah, it's, yeah. The practice isn't, the dedication is not the problem. It's <laughs> the, the, lack of, the lack of talent still is, uh, yeah. Should we get back onto F1? No more, no more paddle stuff. <laughs> So on this podcast, right, there's been so many comments and I've had so many messages of everyone just wanting to hear from you, GP, because it seems like we never really get the chance to hear from you. Yeah, I'm on. (laughs) But you never really get interviewed. You don't normally hear from you apart from your radio messages to each other, et cetera, or just seeing little social media clips. So it's really nice to have you here. So I'd love to sort of delve deep into your career and how you ended up being sat here today did you study engineering how did you end up here i was actually a writer yeah there's some there's some is that true no there's some random sources out there Uh, i'm looking at Gemma there um but no the the truth is i studied engineering like most engineers within the same side mechanical engineering in, in london um and then i happened to quite randomly um get a job in germany for a formula three team uh, that was in 2004. Uh, and then the owner of the 2000, uh, the Formula 3 team uh, was part of the group that bought out uh, Eddie Jordan. Right. Um, so I'd, my first year in Formula 1 was in 2005 as a data engineer in Jordan. Uh, I spent 10 years there, uh, equally split as data engineer and race engineer. And uh, yeah, since then, I've been here as a race engineer as well. So, I mean, as we're, so as we're recording this, it's just after you've won the World Championship. How did you celebrate? Because you won on the Saturday, but then you had to race again on the Sunday. So little celebration on the Saturday. Yeah, I mean, just a little bit. But I mean, also, I still wanted to win on the Sunday, right? Yeah. So you can't rock up with a with a, with a an hangover yeah. to the track. So, yeah, we just celebrated with everyone who was there at the track, you know, to also look back a little bit on, on the year because I think it has been... Just incredible as a team. Uh, we've broken quite a few records out there. Um, so it was very nice to get everyone together there. Um, of course, it was all shifted a bit later in the night because of the night race anyway. Um, but yeah, it was good. Um, but then I think everyone was very quickly also, you know, back into race mode for the day after. Yeah. Because, yeah, that was also an important race, I think, to to win. I mean, being part of, of Red Bull since 2016, I believe, it was when you joined, wasn't it? Yeah, Rebel Racing, yeah. Yeah, so how how has that journey been for you? I mean, you, you must have started going, I don't know where we're going to be in a few years' time, but I'm just going to work as hard as we are, and now you're sat here as three-time world champion. Yeah, I mean, I never thought that um, I would be sitting here as a three-time world champion at the time. Um, you know, I joined the top team. They, of course, had won quite a few championships already, went through a bit of a transition phase as well with the new regulations and then, you know, finding the correct engine partner. And yeah, it just took a bit of time to, to sort that out. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, luckily, um, yeah, we had our years now where we could find, you know, be fighting for a title. It's exciting because then now you can approach next year with so much more confidence because you're now, 
you know, you've done it three times in a row and now you're like, well, I might as well just do it again next year. You can yeah, approach with a different attitude. I think we never lacked confidence as a team. Yeah. Um, I think we always believed that we could do it. It was just trying to put everything together and learn from your mistakes as well. And I think that's the beautiful thing about the team. They don't rely on confidence, I think. Um, and I think it shouldn't rely on confidence because you should be anyway confident in your own abilities. Everyone in the team, not, not only me. But um, yeah, you just need to work harder than everyone else out there, you know, to try and make it happen. Yeah. So today, I mean, you're working hard today because this is a simulator day for both of you, right? Super so hard. What have you been up to? <laughs> uh, just preparing the, the triple header um, because I can't, I can't fly back in between the, the races. It doesn't make sense to do that. So it's important, you know, this day that, um, yeah, we nail the setup, um, you know, some sprint races as well mm -hmm. in the meantime. So, um, yeah, that's why it's very nice, you know, to do one hour of podcast in between yeah. to have the because you're such a big fan of perfect podcasts. preparation. <laughs> 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 nah, but it's it's always important, you know, to um, try and set up the cars as good as you can before you even get there. Yeah. So with the same with you, GP, because you are also head of race engineering, aren't you? So do you kind yes, of liaise yeah. with with Hugh Bird quite a lot and kind of have meetings and discuss things between the two of you as well, or is it mostly a solo thing that you're up to with Max? In terms of simulator? A bit, a bit of both, racing and sim work. Yeah, I mean, sim work, I guess it's uh, slightly more independent across crews. Um, there's no real need to tread on each other's toes in that respect. Of course, a lot of the pre-event simulation information that comes through is cross-departmental. Um, so we're aware of the various simulations that are happening on a vehicle side or aerodynamics, et cetera, mm -hmm. and what new components are coming through that we can incorporate into our race event preparation. As a head of race engineering, which I think is has been a bit tricky to uh, get on top of because I am obviously primary focus has to be uh, race engineering role with, with Max. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I'll be doing a disservice to him. But also, I need to be very aware that I am head of race engineering as well. Um, so I need to be there to lend a hand for uh, Hugh and Woody and, and Checo uh, and the rest of the crew mm. as as and when. And you know, I'm. I, it's obviously clear to them that I'm I'm available uh, if ever they need help, whenever they need help to talk through issues they may have or just want to run through uh, what they want to do with the car, run plan, etc., strategy. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's finding the right balance. It's busy. It, You're busy. It, it's quite busy. Yeah. What do you, what do you do to relax? Um, aside from paddle. Aside from paddle, uh, which you're very good at. Apparently, better than Max Verstappen, I've heard. <laughs> I quite like mountain biking. Okay. Um, I think Simon's been on, hasn't he, before? Yeah. And they've spoken about mountain biking. Yeah. Um, we're quite lucky to have the, the woods here locally to us, um, which means you can get out there, have a burst for an hour. Set um, purple sectors. Yeah, set a few PBs on Strava and then... Very uh, nice, yeah. <laughs> and I go back, clean If the you bike. could have Max engineering in your ear while you're doing that, do you think that would help? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what to do myself on the, on the bike, so let alone if I have to try and coach you. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. No. <laughs> do you I think mean, you're already shunted enough by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think if there was a situation where you were behind the wheel of a, an F1 car and you were engineering, how do you think you would cope with that with a, a swap of roles? <laughs> well, we had a few like um, little debates, I remember, with Cookie as well, thinking about what lap time you could do. Who's so. Cookie? <laughs> uh, he's been um, my performance engineer for, for basically most of the season. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, you just have this like little discussion. What do you think you could do, you know, like looking at onboards and data? So here on Talking Ball, we have a thing called Red Bull's 100 Objects. So everybody that comes in as a guest will bring in an item that means something to them during their time here at Red Bull. I mean, we've had numerous things like uh, Adrian Newey's notebook. We've had laptops. We've had pictures. And I can see two giant trophies sat on the table. So we're going to start with this one right here, which I believe is your first ever win. Is that right, Max? An F1, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yep. talk us through the moment that you won this trophy and how that felt for you. Pretty insane, I think. Um, joining the team the week before, going through the simulator uh, sessions that I had to do, getting used to the car, the procedures. It's like a little book booklet, <laughs> I remember. 
yeah, I honestly had no expectations going into the weekend at the time. I was like, well, I need to learn so many things. You know, suddenly the pressure of being in a top team, you know, you can't just hide anymore in like a bad weekend or a bad result. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I drove out of the, the pits and yeah, completely different car for me in FP1. So <clears throat> it was all about getting used to the car, you know, getting on top of the tools, uh, balance your seat, you know, a lot of things. The engine was different to what I was used to. Um, yeah. And I think overall, I think we had quite a solid weekend up until the Sunday. It was all, all okay. I was quite happy with it. But then, uh, yeah, and I will never forget um, on the grid, I think Christian came to me. He said, well, you know, just enjoy, no pressure. Try to score a few points. So, yeah, okay. He says then, no pressure, but there's Yeah, yeah there's but pressure. I mean, it was my first yeah. race. I think they meant, well, you know, just no pressure. Don't do anything silly, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I qualified fourth, I think, at the time. And uh, yeah, I mean, turn four was a beautiful corner that day in lap one where two Mercedes cars just disappeared off the road. Um, and then I knew, okay, we might be on the podium here today, you know, if we, if I'm holding on in the race, because again, it was like my first proper race distance yeah. in the car. So uh, it was definitely a bit different to what I was used to uh, in terms of speed. It was quite a bit faster. Um, and yeah, how the race panned out, like I could look after my tires quite well. We did the two stop. I had to keep Kimi behind for quite a few laps. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely felt like with 10 laps ago, I was getting quite nervous, but I was like, I can't, I can't make a mistake. I kept telling myself, I can't, this is, this is going to be my first win. I can't lock up. I can't <laughs> yeah, do anything wrong here. And I kept telling myself that until the last lap and I crossed the line and yeah, won the race. I think also GP was completely shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, the, the radio message was like, yeah, like, can't believe this, like. I think everyone was, was a bit like, what, what just happened? Including myself. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a weekend that you will never forget because, you know, you, you work to get into Formula One and you dream of being on a podium one day. You dream of, of course, being on the top step. And once I stood there, it was quite emotional seeing also my dad there. Mm -hmm. I think he was even more nervous than me because I think apparently during the race, he started bleeding out of his nose from, because he was that nervous. Really? <laughs> yeah, the nose bleed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he was very nervous, uh, together with my manager there as well. I think they were watching in my room. So I think they must've been jumping around like crazy. Um, yeah. So that was definitely a, a dream come true that day. Yeah. How, how did that day feel for you, GP? Yeah. It's a similar vibe to be honest with you. Um, how do you, how do you keep him knowing that he's approaching his first win? How do you communicate and keep everything calm and under control in that situation? I think it was more in the lead up to Sunday that, you know, really start to build a picture of, you know, what his capabilities were. Um, so I think just going back a bit, the the 10 days before following the previous race, I remember get I think I had a phone call from Helmut one evening saying, um, you've got a new driver, it's Max Verstappen, and he'll be in this week because he's on the simulator. Okay, I had it confirmed the next morning from here at the factory. And uh, yeah, we organized three days on the simulator really just to you know, get him acquainted, the team, familiar with the crew, uh, procedures, the car, try to run through as much of our usual pre-events um, setup stuff that we would normally do. Um, yeah, and then give him uh, a few challenges in terms of like right, blind tests, qualifying fuel, whatever. And you could just see already the immediacy on, on on how he was picking all this stuff up. You know, there was no repetition involved. Mm. You kind of think, okay, he's an eighteen-year-old kid. He's used to playing PlayStation. What you know, whatever. Um, he, this is going really well. Then we get to the race event, and I remember having a you know, we hit the ground running. It was competitive immediately. There was no major dramas with the balance. Um, no, for me, everything was just insane. Yeah, the no. car was so much better. I was like, wow. I'm the, like, everything was like, wow, you know? Because but I, think, <laughs> yeah. but I think ultimately that was then your downfall in, in qualifying because I think he was just almost so happy to be there. Everything was going well. Yeah. He felt he could just keep relying on his talent and keep chipping away at it and he'll keep finding time that eventually, I think it's at the last... Is it the last run of Q3 that Daniel ended up pipping you? Yeah, well, I bet it was I just, a few tenths. Yeah, actually. I just tried to push like a little bit. Probably at the time too much to what I knew from the car and yeah. I just overdrove it and yeah, ended up being... And we didn't follow the track perhaps enough with some changes that we'd normally make in qualifying. Um, but 
having been through that, you're kind of confident going into Sunday that, you know, we can have a good race here, especially as Max says, once the two leaders had retired. Um, and then it was really just incredible that he was able to manage uh, the rear left tyre would have been the limitation that year. Uh, that rear left tyre for, for as long as he did, yeah. keeping such an experienced driver like Kimi behind, it was uh, it was my first race win as well. Oh, amazing. Um, yeah, so that. it was uh, yeah, double whammy. It was Oh, very nice. Really good day. Now, look, we've got uh, loads and loads of questions to get through. These are from uh, fans that have sent in their questions. So our first three questions are actually on video. So the first one is from Tyler in the USA. Hi, everyone. It's Tyler from New Jersey, United States of America. My question for Max and GP is what is the secret to the two of you maximizing performance and getting the maximum potential out of both driver and machine? Is there a secret behind your magic well, i don't i don't think it's a real secret but i think you just need to get on really well you need to understand what you want from each other like i think nowadays like we really grew in our role as well i guess but i almost don't need to even say anything like um after i say like i have a bit of understeer oversteer like gp knows what he will change on the car uh for me the way i drive the car as well and that takes time i mean that's why i would always be against you know like swapping race engineers or performance and like they're very crucial in your performance yeah that's why yeah the longer you can stay together the better because you will really be one-on-one -on -one. you know it's it's this feeling i agree with weekend. that i mean time and experience and yeah time spent together ultimately is factor one um but also i think what's really important is just to be able to be yourself and i think max feels he can be himself with me I can be myself around him and uh, there's no tiptoeing around any issues at all. You know, if we have to be blunt uh, about something with each other, we will be. And I think that just fast tracks you to um, short term gains, which ultimately is maximizing the potential of the car during a race weekend. Uh, this next question is from Maria in Chile. Hi, it's Maria. I'm from Chile and I have a question for both Max and GB. Uh, in each Grand Prix, we have seen a relationship based on respect, but there also has painful moments and light banter in between. So the question is how important it is a relationship like this and how does it impact the daily work with the car and the team? A good question. So, um, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, of course, respect is very important. But it's what I mentioned before, like, you know, people sometimes... Um, they don't really understand what kind of relationship you have. So mm. for example, if we are on the radio and we're, we sound a bit upset or angry, they think we are in a fight. Yeah. But that's not the case. It's just, we want the best out there. And then of course, sometimes I raise my voice on, on the radio because yeah, I'm full of adrenaline as well driving. And of course, GP is also, he wants the best. And um, yeah, that's why sometimes we have quite fiery uh, conversations. But for me, that is the way I like to approach our weekend, our racing. Uh, because if I would be upset or whatever, or not happy with a certain situation. He's like, copy that. Or like, thank you very much for your message. I was like, <laughs> mate, like, what is going on? You know, like, you know, we are both in this together and we want to have the, you know, best possible result. Um, so, yeah, but of course, respect is very yeah. important. Uh, this next question is from Agatha in Australia. Hi, it's Agatha and greetings from Melbourne, Australia. Max, what is something you've learned from Gian Piero that you value? And Gian Piero, what is something that you have learned from Max that you value? Thank you. I think I learned through GP a lot about the engineering side of yeah. the mechanical side of a car. If I compare that from when I was 17, 18, you know, to now, we, we've discussed so many things in the car that, yeah, the way, you know, things are explained or, you know, um, Throughout, throughout the weekend, you know, how to look after tires, these yeah. kind of things. Like we discuss every single week and so many different details to perform. So I guess that's what I've learned, you know, from, from GP to, yeah, the, to like be the way more experienced and probably also a bit more calm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Have you learned anything from Max, GP? Maybe the, the biggest thing is almost learning how to win, I would say. Like I say, the, the, his first race win was also my first race win. And whilst you have a level of confidence and belief in your working practices, until you actually see that come through, mm. there's always a little bit of doubt about whether somebody else is doing it better than you or you know what you're missing out on, et cetera. Um, and I think 
being with Max and, and winning because it wasn't like it was new to him in, in Formula One, but it wasn't prior to that. I think he's he relaxed me into the into the environment of being able to win races, uh, making it a uh, comfortable and, and familiar thing. Mm. And uh, I think we've just been able to to grow from that. And I know what I feel like I have. This uh, this question from Walker in the USA, uh, I quite like. Um, have you ever had a fake argument during races just to keep us entertained? <laughs> <laughs> no, n- not from my side. I, I know for sure he will say yes. No, uh, not a fake argument, but some fake... Uh, Bit of cheeky comments. Yeah, cheeky comments. <laughs> and it's definitely not going to be the last one as well. <laughs> We've got more to look forward to. Fake art? No, not no fake arguments. No, no. I, sometimes <laughs> I get the feeling that you are just bored, basically. Sometimes, and, and saying well, sometimes I, mean, I just want like hello, or you know. Like, no, no. If you're no, like, no, if you're winning so far, like you're thirty seconds ahead in a race, yeah. Do you kind of you end up just kind of going, hey, so. GP, what you doing? Remember, <laughs> Just remember to chat. hydrate. <laughs> no, but I think even even then, even if we are thirty seconds up the road, you know, I'll still be, you know, in the zone, as it were. Yeah. Still trying to maximise everything and taking everything seriously. Whereas I think at that point, he's perhaps lost a bit of interest. He's like, "Come on, GP, just <laughs> chill out a bit." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know where it was. Just maybe spa, or whatever. Like, you know, sometimes you, you check in, right? Like, uh, you know, how's it going? Uh, all good? All, uh, you know, like, yeah, all good. And then you talk about the tires. And then I um, I said, like, yeah, but we can also keep on pushing, you know, to try and open up a stop. No, we don't need that today. It's not <laughs> necessary. That's because at exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah, know, the same I, point, yeah. I've got Christine in my ear saying, no, no, we don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of reason, reasons to it, but sometimes it's just a bit of banter, you know. That's fair enough, yeah. That's uh, probably then a f- bit of a fake kind of art. This is uh, uh, the last question from Mora in the Netherlands. He says, if you guys would get the chance to compete in any other motorsport together as a driver and an engineer, what other motorsport would you choose? Endurance? Yeah, like Le Mans or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Would you be happy to, to do that? Stay up for 24 hours? I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> it's a different challenge, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, once you've done so many years in F1, probably at one point, you, well, you don't want to do, I think, do this forever, right? You can't, unfortunately. And probably, you know, that's also a very different way of approaching because you're sharing the car with other drivers as well. So it's a quite a, a different kind of approach. I mean, you still go in there to win it, but you have to think about the three drivers. You know, they all have a bit of a different driving style and there's a lot more going on. And yeah, it's a bit of a different experience. It's not like one and a half hour, kind of two hour sprint racing. It's proper endurance. So the, also the whole mentality mindset is is different. Yeah. I mean, I wonder how long you can go without blinking in one of those races. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I have no clue actually. But even while driving in an F1 car, I don't I don't know how many times I blink. It's great actually. I saw a video. I think it was an old video. You're in a car with your dad, and you did. It was pretty much the whole entire lap without blinking, and it was the only time I think your dad reacted to a moment you took a corner and he panicked. And yeah, it's not. And nice that was the only time you blinked. The only time. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's the other way around as well. You know, when my dad is driving the other passenger, you're always a bit like, oh, oh, yeah, 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 because you're not in control. But yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's definitely while driving, you blink a bit less than normal. Yeah. Uh, right, so we also have the HP Poly Challenge. So they are uh, our partners on this podcast. So we have here the PolySync 20. Now, we've discussed the uh, little cheeky radio messages that you've had between each other. Some of them a little bit heated, some of them a little bit cheeky. So... Your challenge, we've got three clips here and you will get half a point for each thing you get right. So I want the race and the year that this radio message happened. Okay, so we're going to go with clip number one. What a joke, mate. I can't even see where I'm going. So much vibration. Understood, Max. Well, if it's uh, safety concern for you, we're happy to box. I'll just visit the dentist after the weekend. Clearly a very bumpy <laughs> race for you. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't think that was related to the track surface. No, that was the uh, tyre vibration, don't you think? It, it must have been like 2020 in Silverstone, maybe. Is that is that the answer you're going for? I had Sochi in my mind, but maybe Sochi. it's not. Sochi? Oh, wait. No, because that was actually quite a good race. I was not saying what a joke. Do you want to go Silverstone then? No, I think I have to rely you're on you going to go Sochi? Him. 
But the year. Yeah, what year was it? Because that can't be 2020. 19. Ah, this oh. is completely wrong. I yeah. think that's... Well, I mean, you're way off because yeah. none of that was right. Um, it was Portugal in 2021. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You remember it well, I see. <laughs> oh, you well, guys. Just, but that's yeah. right. It's an incredibly smooth track, so it must have been tired of Yeah, I must have locked up. <laughs> <laughs> right, clip number two. Right, so I think we're a little bit close for tires at this stage. Silverst Silverstone, two this is Silverstone 2020, the 70th anniversary race. Uh, you didn't even have to hear the yeah, whole entire clip. I yes. knew exactly. I remember that, Max, you're too close to the cross. It was like, I could almost punch my own wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it was that, that last bit, I'm not just sitting behind like a grandma. <laughs> yeah, it was just, like, I mean. Like we've discussed three hours before you mean, Max, and you'd agreed to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I saw, I'm going to win this race. I was like, I'm not sitting behind. I'm going to push them. Brilliant. Because they were so quick that year. And I was like, this is maybe my only chances here to win it because we were better on tires that, that we can do to the compound selection. And uh, yeah, I was like, I'm going for it. <laughs> Worst case, we finished P3 anyway. So <laughs> love it. GP loved it as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, clip number three. I can also push on that we do another stop, a little bit of bits of training. Just talked about it. No, not this time. <laughs> Come on then, what was the race in the year? <laughs> Spa 23. Is the correct answer. No, 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 not this time. No pit stop training. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for joining me. It's been really lovely sitting and chatting to you. Enjoy the rest of the season. This is where I would normally say to whoever we've got on, go and go and smash every race. But I mean, you've already won the championship. So just smash go and enjoy it. Out of it. The park. Well, there's still five more races and we want to win all of them. Yeah. So just go and win all of them and enjoy and celebrate because you can. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Fabulous. Bit of a champagne at the end. <laughs> champagne. <laughs> and we'll see you next time.